Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, Canucks 2425 uh, training camp here. Uh, following players will not participate in day one. Um, Dakota Joshua, Teddy Bluger had a minor surgery uh, on his lower body. Cole McWard had a minor surgery on his lower body. Teddy is probably, uh, uh, I would say, a week away. Uh, Cole McWard would probably be listed as week to week. And Thatcher Demko will not uh, attend day one here. Uh, Thatcher will, uh, will uh, address you guys tomorrow regarding his status here uh, moving forward. Patrick, obviously the Dakota Joshua news came as a surprise to everybody yesterday. Uh, we saw the statement. What more can you tell us about a timeline, if any? And also, when did you as an organization find out about his condition? I think we respect Dakota and, and his situation, and therefore he put the statement out there, and I wouldn't make any further comments at, at this time. Rick, uh, just how excited are you to get training camp going? I know you've probably been thinking about it for quite a while now and with some of the new additions that have come into the organization as well. Yeah, I think, you know, this time of year, you're really excited. I think the last 10 days is probably the hardest for coaches or players because, you know, you're anxious. You still have 10 days, but I think, um, you know, just getting the, the coaches together the last two, three weeks periodically, talking to some of the players, um, you know, I know they're excited because they're asking a lot of questions. You know, what are we doing in the skating test? Who's where? Who's what? So um, I see an excited group and, I, and our coaches too. In our meetings, you can tell, you know, um, these, these hour meetings are now turning to three hours, but they're so excited to, to, to you know, get started. So, um, yeah, we're really excited, like everybody. Um, you know, in training camp, it's really only five days and you go into exhibition games. So we're, we're really. We have themes for every day, so we're excited about in implementing a lot of those little things here and uh, trying to do a couple of different things. Uh, this is for everyone, I guess, if you could uh, address it. Obviously, you guys had a uh, tremendous regular season, very good playoff run. You know it's going to get uh, tougher. What's the biggest challenge to have your guys uh, match and exceed what you did a year ago? <clears throat> Well, I think Patrick and Jim said at the end of the year, you know, we all, you know, you know, we, we made strides you know, and I, and I commend the players, you know, we, we asked them to do some things and I thought they, they passed the grade. Now to get to the next plateau, you know, the higher expectations and it's going to be hard. We know that. So that's the next level, um, starts day one tomorrow. You know, it's, uh, you know, my things don't waste a rep out there, you know, let, let's make sure that. We make each other accountable like we did last year. Um, you know, so I think the excitement and and the players knowing the learning process, you know, that there's some things we've done different, you know, uh, game seven, uh, we're so close. So um, I guess that, that for me though, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna be harder and it's not gonna be easier. So you might as well condition your mind right now. It's gonna be hard. Sorry, Patrick, can you comment on uh, this? This is a pretty good facility to, to hold a training camp. What, what do you like about this facility in Penticton that's a good fit for, for camp, you think, for the organization? Yeah, you're right. Um, we're very pleased to be out here for the young stars, uh, the turnout for the fans in this area. Um, you got a great uh, facility here in Penticton. Uh, we expect fans to be here and support us. We've got two ice sheets. Uh, I think uh, uh, this will be a great environment for, uh, for our players and staff for the next couple of days here. Patrick, I know you mentioned that Thatcher was going to talk tomorrow. We presume that he had a physical today. Can you give us any kind of an update on his status, his timeline, and, and what we can expect? Well, there, that, that's the reason Thatcher wants to address you guys and, and uh, uh, the privacy for the players. And, and uh, um, he, he, he wanted to, to uh, get in front of you guys tomorrow, tomorrow and, and uh, clear where he is. So, But uh, I think Talk uh, said here a couple of days ago that he was in – uh, making progress, he's been in working extremely hard, and uh, he seems to be in a great mindset. Hey, talk. Um, in the evolution of your tenure as Canucks coach, 
you came in and initially it was almost like back to school, right? It was, we're going to do this. You got to be here. Yeah. Last camp, you kind of built that. You, you solidified your foundation and really seemed to um, get that structure in place. So this year, what is the thrust? Like, what, where do you build from what you've got now? Yeah, no, it's a good question because I think it's important to, to grow myself as, as a coach um, and the players. You know, like I said, last half of the year, I didn't have to say half the stuff. Uh, they were saying it, you know, we talked about our pillars and staples. And I think they that's a foundation. We'll, we'll never get away from that. But I think especially the first day, two days at camp, I really want to uh, uh, stress a, a transition game. A lot of, um, you know, regroups, a lot of odd man rushes. I um, think we're going to do, you know, a lot of just a lot of speed. I like to really put that into place. Um, we'll never get away from D-zone coverage, drills and stuff like that's our staple. And we'll, we'll never get away from that. But I think it's important. You know, we got Jake DeBrusque, you know, Heinen, uh, sure. We got some faster players um, and some of the D that we, we like the way they look back there and getting the puck up to our forwards. I think we just want to play a really fast brand. Like we, we tried last year and I thought we, for the most part, we, you know, we were a pretty good rush team, uh, especially the first half uh, uh, on conversion. But, uh, you know, I thought the second half not as good. And I think there's some uh, elements there. And I think that starts from day one. Because I think you have to think that way. You know, I, I don't think, uh, you know, when you want to play a certain way, it's got to be, it's got to be you almost like to eat, sleep it, drink it every night. And that's the way we, we have to approach this training camp. So guys are ready to go uh, where we're going to play a lot faster. And, um, you know, you know, we saw a lot of film this year, this summer, where we had chances to be a four on two and somehow the other team caught up to us. Now, like I said, there's, a, there's some factors to it, but I think it's important that, uh, the guys we have, we play faster. Yeah. Patrick, what are your expectations for the players that your club brought in on PTOs? Um, so we, are, we brought in Sammy Blay, um, an experienced guy, played games on a cup contending team in St. Louis a couple of years ago. Um, experienced. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him. I think he, he what he contributed to on the ice is the way we want to play. We want to you know, be hard to play against, and and uh, is he's a checker. Uh, so there is uh, there's an opportunity for him. Um, Ferguson uh, was a goalie uh, local uh, with uh, ex pro experience, and and uh, we, we talked about if if uh, uh, if we had a not six goalies at the start of the camp that uh, uh, or options uh, that we looked about, and and he was the strongest uh, that it was available. So we're excited about those two guys. Uh, and Jim, is there any update on practice facility? <laughs> Had to ask. <laughs> no, that's OK. <laughs> I expected it. Uh, there's not a big update. We, we have made some headway. Uh, we do have a few options now that we are considering. But we're not at the point to feel comfortable to make any announcement. But. I do think we've made a lot of headway and no use of me saying hopefully it's getting done soon because I said that last year. Jim, last season you talked about, you know, being a playoff team. If a lot of things went right, obviously you guys had a great year and grew as an organization. Where do you see yourself in that evolution as opposed to last year going into this year? And where are the expectations for this team, do you think? Well, I'll say the same thing. You know, everything has to go right. It's like talk just pointed out, you know, the, the challenges will be greater, certainly. But I believe that uh, the team that we started with last year, that we have just as good a team to start the season this year as we did last year, and probably better. Now, that's not saying a whole lot because we have to get to that step at the trade deadline and prepare for playoffs and be a good enough team to contend. So we'll see where this team is as we go along during the season. We get into January, February, make those decisions to what adjustments have to be made. But as long as the team builds off of what they did last year, stick to what the coach is telling them, stick to the system through good times and bad times, this team has a chance to do pretty well. Rick, you mentioned some of the questions that your players have had for you, skating tests, the theme, uh, yeah. different theme for every day. 
Um, would you answer some of those questions for us? For, for when they were asking these questions? Well, and just in terms of what your plans are for the skating test and, and what teams are you developing day by day? Well, a lot of the guys have completed the skating test. Um, so that's a good thing. You know, the player, uh, with the player uh, union thing, you're allowed to do it before. A lot of guys did it, so that was good. Um, and I'll get some updates to you who did well. I mean, um, for the most part, I think guys did really well. Um, asking about, um, you know, We'll probably dive into special teams a little bit earlier than I think other teams. I think uh, a lot of guys were excited about that. I know Millsy was excited about that, about doing power play a little bit earlier. I think that's important. Even though we have a lot of guys in camp, I think it's important because we got some, you know, even the rookie camp, I really saw some guys make some strides from last year. So uh, it's not, this camp, especially the first five, is just not for the chunk art. That it, it's, it's everybody, it's every level. Um, and I, I, I really want to see our leaders especially from the first drill take over and start the pace. I think uh, last year they did a pretty good job. I think there's another level there. So I need, I need them to do that because we got some really, we spent a lot of time as coaches uh, with these diff type of different drills, reasons why we're doing these drills to, to make our team better. So I talked about that. I talked to some of the veterans, hey, I need you to be ready from, from the first, you know, the first drill. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to kill the guys. This is not, you know, I'm not uh, like, you know, our coaches, we're not drill sergeants. It's, it, and I, the guys know that. It's an edu we educate the players on this camp. There's a reason why, yeah, you got to work hard and we want guys to, to you know, bust their ass, but it, there's a reason why we do these things. You know, we're not doing mountains back and forth for half an hour. I, I don't believe in that stuff. And I think the players respect that, you know, that we're, um, there's a partnership with the, the coaches. And, and, and they've shared some stuff over the summer what we can, hey, let's, should we work on this? So I think that was important. I think the coaches were excited. And if you look at the coach staff too, you know, I told you guys this before, we're a bunch of teachers out there, you know, we have a bunch of groups where a player can go to any group and, and get what, get some good, get some good feedback. You know, the, you know, you got the twins, you got, we just got hired Manny Maholtra, smart guy, you know, obviously footy, hell of a job last year, Yogi promoted, who's already, he's, I mean, He's been incredible all summer. I mean, I can go down the list of, of the teachers we have. Our development staff uh, spent some time in the last three days. Um, they're great. So I, I just think for me, this camp is about, and they understand it is us learning from last year and what we're going to work on our weaknesses, but also work on our strengths, you know, uh, which was without the puck. So that's kind of overall thing about our camp. You mentioned some prospects that stood out to you during. Yeah your time watching young stars. In terms of hitting the ground running and then wanting to have that competitive camp, give guys a look, the education side of it, is, is that intention? How do you sort of manage that in terms of giving the Lacaramackis, the Baines yeah. of the world, an, a, a look? Yeah, the, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I watch, I probably watch the game different than some people. Um, I look at some of the elements, like uh, the big uh, Alfred, I always butcher his name, the big Swede there, Al Alfredson. I mean, yeah. This guy really impressed me. Um, he was doing stuff last year, and they talked about the development, and, they, and I watched what he did, and it was like, oh, my God, he went from here to here, getting the puck off the wall, deep delay, body position, makes a – he did it three times. Like, last year I didn't see as much, so that makes you excited. Leonard Mackey, I mean, he's, uh, he's a buzzsaw, great shot. Be anxious to see him play with some good players and um, see what he can do. There's, I can give you a listen. Uh, Pedersen on the back end really liked the way he played this uh, smart guy um, so I, I get, that's what I look for these players and, and get them in here with these, you know, these five days especially hopefully maybe a couple guys get some, uh, some games in the exhibition game um, but I'm looking for the, the, the stuff that we're teaching them in the, in the development and, and, and are they applying it and they did it in the games and now can they do it in the big camp that's what I'm looking for uh, one for Jim and one for Patrick. Jim, I'll start with you. Um, I want to ask you about Petey. Uh, I know, Rick, you've already talked about him, but um, given the enormity of that contract and just how important he is to the organization, what are your expectations for him early on in the season? And, and have you had a chance to talk to him and what advice you might give him? Well, I have talked to him a few times and uh, I, uh, I'm really impressed with what how he's come back in the off season. He seems to be a guy that's more relaxed and more comfortable. Um, and for obvious reasons, last year he's, whether players say they think about their contracts or not, deep down, 
they do. Everybody does, okay? And uh, this is a guy that, that I believe has worked really hard this summer. He's done everything he can to play as a, as a top-line player. And uh, everybody here has seen him play. We all know how good he is. So the expectations for him is to be one of the top players on our team. And Patrick, going into camp last year, it felt like you had some areas that you wanted to further evaluate and make sure in case you needed to address early. And, you know, you did that on defense. Um, is there an area going into this camp that you feel you need to really take a look at to make sure where you're where you want to be and that you may have to address early? Well, I hope uh, in a positive way here, as Talk said, with the uh, amount of depth and young players that performed well here, I'm, I'm as excited as him to see those guys, how it translates here to being with a bigger team, some better players, more, better structure. And... Uh, I think that's why we have training camp here to uh, to see our depth players, our young players taking the steps, uh, making decisions hard for, for Rick and his coaching staff and for myself. But I also believe that uh, sitting here today, we definitely have uh, more depth in, in the overall uh, uh, part of the organization. Um, very pleased with the coaching staff and Rick has mentioned the teachers that will make our players get better. And I think that was a big thing last year where the players trusted the coaches and, and allowed themselves to be coached and we became a team and that's where you have success. So I think my job is always to keep my ears open and, and see what's available and if it, if it makes sense, but uh, not uh, as of now in any particular area. Yeah, um, yeah. I think when you, you fill a lineup out for like day one tomorrow, you know, you can't really read into too much because I, I'm going to switch some things. I know, uh, you know, I and I rely on Patrick and Jim and, and uh, the other guys. Hey. You know, maybe give this guy a chance here and here. I, I think that's what the five days are for. Um, but obviously, you know, Millsy and, and Bess, you know, they got, you know, they got uh, a great chemistry. I think Petey and, and Jake together uh, from the start, like to see them, um, give them some time together. And it's okay to rotate wingers, you know, like, uh, you know, Dakota and, and then Garland, you know, those guys together played damn good hockey for us. I mean, it's hard for me to break those guys up. So nothing's set in stone. Um, you know, I, I think it's important that uh, you have different puzzles at different times. And um, so I, I wouldn't read in too much of the lines off the start. And Jim and Patrick, I've got a bigger um, league-wide question for you two. There's been so much talk about LTIR over the course of the offseason. Wondering where you guys stand on any potential tweaks to LTIR, especially as it pertains to playoffs. Yeah, um, well, we have uh, Tucker, Tucker Pullman, obviously, that's uh, it's not going to play this year. Um, we, our job uh, as a management is to to manage our, our roster cap situation. And uh, as of uh, today, we have uh, uh, different options to not uh, utilize uh, Tucker's uh, contract to put him in, in the LTIR um, starting the season. So we'll see here over the next couple of weeks if anything changes. Uh, but we have, as I said, uh, different uh, options of not being in off-season LTIR. Rick, a lot of your core players uh, had career best seasons offensively yeah. last year. Um, with those core guys, given how strong they were last year, what does the next step kind of look like for them, whether it's on the ice, off the ice? And as a coaching staff, how do you extract more when guys like Brock, Quinn, JT seem to play to the pe peak of their potential last year? Yeah, uh, for me, it's short-term goals. I mean, um, you know, they all play terrific for us. Um, you know, I know everybody likes, so what well, can this guy score? Can this guy, you know, can this guy score 30? Can this guy score? I think if you just go, we worry about training camp, you go from there. They know what they did last year. and They were successful. You know, they came, to, they came into each day last year especially a training camp on 
And, I, you know, I don't know our record in the sense that I don't think, you know, that we lost four in a row one time. But other than that, we were pretty consistent. I thought that was because those guys could, if we lost the game, I didn't see the frustration from those guys that I did the year before. So can they work on that again this year? Is there another level of not being frustrated uh, if things don't go our way? Yeah, I think that's something they can work on. Um, I think that the, the, the practice habits have gotten way better, and that's going to help your personal goals. I think the accountability the leaders have amongst themselves is going to it's going to drive that, you know, having another good year. I mean, you just got to drive yourself every day um, um, when you have a great year. It's, 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 it's sustainable and things like that. I mean, JT Miller over the last bunch of years, I mean, he's had a lot of points for the Canucks. Pease scored a lot of goals. Quinn's always been one of the, you know, top defensemen last year. You know, Brock, he can score. So, I mean, it's there, and I think it, you got you got to keep creating that environment where um, they can reach those goals, whatever they are. And and the main goal is winning. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Rick, you got some great minutes out of Pia Suter last year in yeah. a variety of places, primarily on the wing in the second half. As you look at your depth chart now, is he slotted in as a center to start this season, just given who you've got and who you don't have? And then the second part is, without Bluger, are there other veterans that you want to experiment or maybe have a look at at center? Or is that just going to be a good opportunity for sort of some of those tweeners to maybe bump up here at camp and into the first week of the preseason? Yeah, the tweeners, I see, yeah, they're, 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 we want them to push. And I've seen some, some guys uh, in the rookie camp, um, even I've heard him in, in the skates that these guys are looking really good. So, um, yeah, Pius right now, yeah, I, I, I mean – he'd be a center for us. That's why he's a smart guy. I think what he scored 15 plus goals last year. He, um, you know, we need that, that up the middle hockey IQ and he has that. Um, so uh, as it shakes out now, yeah. But the, the luxury that we have uh, down the road, if anything ever happens, he's a hybrid. I mean, uh, Miller, Miller uh, JT's a hybrid. Petey can be a hybrid sometimes. So we're lucky to have that. Teddy, Teddy can play the way. So we like that fact that the centers can play wings if it happens down the road but uh, right now yeah I have him at center uh, question for uh, Jim and then question for Patrick uh, Jim travel has always been a big conversation in Vancouver Van the Canucks are usually one of the more uh, travel teams based off kilometers this year uh, you guys rank around the middle when it comes to total kilometers projected for the season so how important was it to ensure that you know you guys aren't going on these massive long road trips and uh, keeping the travel down this year? Well, you kind of get caught in between because the coach likes to go on so many games and road trips and and uh, so we have that as a guideline. But the fact of the matter is the way the road trips were set up last year, that's what cut down the, cut down the travel. And uh, so we haven't uh, done an analysis on our schedule this year, but where you know we we will our travel will be cut down again. We're certainly not going to be one of the highest mi mileage to kilometer team. Sorry, I'm in Canada, uh, so we're we're hoping to be in the middle again. And uh, for Patrick, you know, you, uh, the organization brought in a lot of players at the NHL level, but also at the AHL level. So how important is it to have that level of competition at the AHL level for a lot of your young guys, even if it does force some maybe prospects down to the ECHL for um, stints during the season? Yeah, I think, I think it's a, yeah, extremely important for the whole organizations to have uh, competition. And uh, we believe that the young players need uh, leadership from, from experienced uh, character players here. And uh, very fortunate with the job Brian Johnson have done with Abbotsford and uh, uh, the affiliation we have with Cal Masu had worked really well, uh, bringing in some of, some of the guys on, on American League contracts and giving them an opportunity to grow and, and hopefully that down the road translate into NHL contract. I think uh, our coaching staff uh, in Abbotsford have done a tremendous job here in a short period of time at the rookie tournament implementing the system in the drills that that, that Manny was part of the, the coaches summit this summer and uh, with our development staff uh, Michael Samuelson and Michael Masaryk being around too it's uh, it's been uh, pleasant to, to watch them over the, the last couple of days here. 
Rick, at the end of last season, you told us that you were going to look at your system and see if there are any tweaks you can make to potentially create more offense. Heading into this year, do you see your team playing a more open style of play? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's not so much... It, it's it's not like brain surgery or we're trying to reinvent the wheel, but there are stuff that I think, especially off the rush or off our breakouts, where we can attack better. And I think we've uh, we've done a good dive into it. We got some good video for the players. We got some good drills. Um, you know, I don't I, you know, I don't want to bore you guys exactly what it is, but a lot of times we're we're not getting the puck in the middle enough, and um, we're only having a certain chunk of players middle driving enough. So. We, I think if you do that, I think if uh, we get our D up in the play a little bit more, not just uh, Hughes, um, that'll help. Um, but our breakouts are really good. It's just that we're not, you know, like I said, you guys, sometimes we break out and we're ahead of everybody, but somehow the other team catches up. Though. And I don't think it's the other team's faster. I think sometimes we play a little bit safer. Guys are just content and get chipping a puck in. Because we were one of the best teams, forechecking teams, especially on the same side ship. But I think there's more weak side plays for us. And I think that's on me to get the players to do that and, um, you know, give them a playbook when it comes to that. So I, I expect a lot of myself to get these some of this information to these guys, especially early, so we can apply it and, um, and, and do a lot of reps with it.